Disney has its spin-offs, Pixar has its spin-offs, DreamWorks has their spin-offs, though I need to find some serious time to sit down and consume all of that. And of course, after a little bit of digging, Illumination has their spin-offs as well. If you were the target demographic of five years old when the first appearance of the Minions hit the big screens, you'd be 18 now. That's horrifying. But with only five installments of Minion stuff, surely, surely you'd be craving more now that you've hit actual adulthood. Well, don't you worry. Minions aren't just built for those Facebook mum memes or on every merchandise in existence in the early 2010s. Interspliced across the years, there have been shorts of the Minions as well. Typically, it's two to three short releases for every Illumination movie that comes out, usually on the Blu-ray disc of any given movie. But thankfully, I don't have to buy the entire physical library of Illumination movies to catch all of Illumination's side projects, as there is a compilation volume called Minions and More, stitching together all of Illumination shorts all into one place. And naturally, it has Minions in the title. There is a Volume 1, a Volume 2, and a Volume 3 coming out in July, not necessarily covering the newest stuff. One of those shorts is one aptly just named Banana from 2010. It's the original Minion shorts. But there is also a spin-off Mario short on that list that comes with the Mario movie Blu-ray about Kamek trying to sneak in a power-up to Bowser post-jar. Hmm. Still, we only have access to two volumes. I don't have any physical Blu-rays. I've never even watched a film on Blu-ray at all. I know, I'm behind the times, but that gives us a viewing of 21 Illumination shorts. Uh, and 11 of which are Minions related. Of course, more than half of them are Minions related. So, much like we did with Cars on the Road, we'll be quickly going through each episode and ranking them. Plus, with so much Illumination content all plugged together, don't be surprised to see a follow-up real soon when Volume 3 comes out. Or I choose to tackle all of the Grinch and Mario shorts or something. Are they allowed to do that? They must have some weighty contracts with their collaborators. <laughs> Number one on our list is Puppy. Huh? Drug misuse? That's an interesting warning you have on this Netflix compilation, but okay, looking forward to it. Set in the world of Despicable Me 2, since all the Despicable Me ones are locked behind Volume 3, it's all about a minion wanting to have a puppy. And though there is Kyle, the rabid dog that they all canonically have, he's not really puppy material. So instead, the minion tries out a few other options, a squirrel, a pigeon, a ladybug, until eventually settling on... An alien. Alright, sure. He feeds the alien, there's crop circles in the garden, he walks it. There's like simlish music playing in the background because we're in the minions gibberish land of logic. And there is actually one cool beat I like about how the alien spaceship can play music by burning onto the disc directly with its laser beams. That's cool. It can also enlarge on food, which the minions all enjoy, and giant bananas too, because of course. The alien destroys a TV, Gru evicts them, and so the alien burns some constellations into view. It's like half good, half roll your eyes territory, you know? A very minion start. We then come to learn from the dialogueless exchange that the alien doesn't feel properly at home here, and that their home is very, very far away, you know. E.T. Our minion is sad on that fact, and the next day he sends out an email to their galaxy. Alright. So in the morning, the alien can be greeted by its real family. There's a semblance that there's going to be an emotive beat here, but it's a three minute minion short. That's not going to happen. The alien heads off, but leaves behind a gigantified ladybug so our minion can still have company. See, it's okay to say goodbye to your pets and your friends, as long as you have something suitable to replace them. Then goodbyes don't need to have any weight at all. This short is a very short. This is about as middle of the road as I was expecting on the concept of an illumination side story. It just goes. It covers the checkmark beats it has in regards to minion running gags, and is kind of there, kind of not. We'll put it neutrally in the center of our ranking list, and probably cover them a bit faster than that. Also, each one of these shorts comes with its own Illumination logo, which is nice to see a hint of creativity played with the brand. This first time, it was fly swatting a bunch of minions, which is about as accurate as the IP feels to me most of the time. <laughs> I'm still surprised. There's a Grinch short in between these? This is like solidly someone else's IP. Can How can they do that? Following that, we have Minion Scouts. This short, 
maybe my brain is rotting from the amount of yellow Tic Tacs I've witnessed in the past week, this short seems pretty good. You can get the concept immediately. The minions try out being Boy Scouts. Hilarity ensues. It all starts from the desire of wanting a big shiny badge, and naturally the scout leader is put through the ringer. It's just good slapstick comedy in places. An emblem of how things could be good in the future in Minions 2. Ah, and it's here that that drug reference makes sense. The minions trip out on some berries they were supposed to identify. I see, I see. I actually really like one of the jokes where a minion is so frustrated things aren't going as planned that he whips out a bazooka to sort out the situation. That's just some great cartoon logic to laugh at. They then are failed for the semester, given a badge of sharing, and naturally fight over it. Ending off feeling cool for having a badge and convincing the whole platoon to go for the same thing next time. Beautiful, simple, cartoony, and about the best you could ask when your foundational place is with the minions. But almost every asset gets reused and called back to like the bear, so it's great. Better than the first one, it's now the top of the list. You found the <laughs> Skimming over a Secret Life of Pets spin-off whereby they focus on Norman. Who cares about Norman? This literally feels like an Illumination equivalent to that one Bolt spin-off. We reach Training Wheels, fittingly with a bike charging logo too. The plot of this one actually focuses on Gru's little girls. As they're all cycling over to the ice cream truck, only the little one Agnes can't cycle yet. Classic relatability to their kiddie audience that have no sportly skills yet. To which she's upset and the minions beat up her bike. <laughs> and as a fix, stuck to some rocky music now, how typical, they add a training montage of teaching her to cycle with crazy inventions and welding some training wheels onto her new and improved bike. Engineering tests go wrong for slapstick reasons and by the end of that pretty tame and standard skim over, Agnes has a unicorn motorbike. Somehow during all of that the ice cream hasn't melted just yet as it's still the same chase sequence that Agnes could just now join on. Hmm. Oh but there's more! The ice cream truck is hijacked! Crime is afoot! So her Tron style bike careens ahead, crashing into the damn thing, raining ice cream everywhere. You know that's a little bit better than the more standard chase the truck into the sunset ending, uh, and then it transforms into a full astronaut suit at the end for some reason. Okay, this is naff. There's a, there's not a lot of creativity here. A montage plays and fixes a scenario. It's about a 4 out of 10, so now below everything we've seen so far. Just barely. Uh, always mess that part up. Whoa, are you alright? Here's a sing short with actually Taron Egerton. That's more motivation than what Cumberbatch had earlier. I'll skip it for you anyway. You're welcome. The Secret Life of Kyle. Still a minion short, believe it or not. It's about their dog. Remember they had a dog? It's called Kyle, apparently. What does it get up to when no one's around? Well, apparently it knows to avoid the minions and heads next door to its romantic interest. Watching a poodle. They don't actually talk like Secret Life of Pets logic, but hey, it's still a winning concept financially. There's a rival dog that leaves Kyle feeling dejected as the goblin thing that it is before spotting a jewel necklace, stealing it, and pushing together two humans romantically in the process, and then coming back to the poodle. Also, there's a couple sunburnt minions now. The rival dog is prepared for his return and steals the necklace to claim as his own, but the poodle is happy enough with Kyle's squeaky toy instead. Kyle wins and jumps in the air in ecstasy. Okay, weird. Why am I finding connections again to other shorts? This feels like that one Toy Story one where Party Animal Rex jumps into the sky for like a third of a second at the end. Clearly with this short, they wanted to capitalize on the secret life of Pets Goldmine some more. They didn't really have much of a concept to run with. No one, el no one's bothered about Kyle, but everything else is sidelined. The plot is incredibly basic and even the execution is just weird. This is actively bad. Bottom of the pack, I say. For the next five minutes, there's like a five minute musical number about being weedies? What is this even from? It's stupid, basic, and a colossal waste of time. Apparently it's Secret Life of Pets. Huh. <laughs> 
Also, there's a Lorax short right after. I know far too little to be getting into the Lorax today. Is that amazing, Phil? Perfect job for you guys. <laughs> the Minions had a Christmas short with Santa's little helpers. Bit of a generic title you have there, but whatever. The Minions inexplicably send themselves to the North Pole instead of Miami and help out at the old factory. Hilarity ensues, but to a lesser degree than the Scouts one. One of the first jokes in-house is that the instructions are to give a twerk and get to work. It was a different time. Comedy was dead back then. They fart on the supervisor and that dyes their hair. That kind of humor. All the way through. They ruin the conveyor, break gingerbread houses, they let out all the reindeer who do have a great devilish smile to them. And as they're fired in the chasing mess of it all, Santa appears. Everything magically sorts itself out within the chaos, except the supervisor is stripped of his clothes. The Minions won, riding out the sleigh in the dead of night, headbanging to a rock version of Jingle Bells in the credits. And the supervisor is seen in screenshots after, being punished by Santa like the Minions were before. This one ain't that great either. Not just because I'm practically sat in a heatwave while watching this, but it's also pretty generic all around. It's just a Christmas cop-out. Why did they hide Santa's identity if they're gonna show him full body in the credits? This ain't as bad as Kyle, but it's not gonna go any higher than that. Also, it's strange, they bunched all of the credits of everything we've seen so far all together at the end of this compilation. Boy, they really do know how to keep up the retention time of kids. Just weird to witness credits transitioning into more credits for a different short. <laughs> you made it halfway through this video? You must really be into minions. Well, whatever. If you're hoping to see some more spin-off content like this, subscribe. Or on a totally different note, a spin-off of our content if you will, I'm starting the rumblings of reviving my second channel. If you're an old school Pikmin fan, you may enjoy what is currently available now. Or wait till weekly Friday uploads where I'm going to be delving into a bit of speed running on the Tears of the Kingdom front. It's a hobby. Check it out. But for now, uh, here's more minions as requested by you, apparently. So on to volume 2, we have Moa Minions. This one is about a blender. What a prompt. But it's very Minions. Even though it came with The Secret Life of Pets. Interesting. Let's see how this one turns out. So there's a puree advert about this banana-licious product. Blend anything and enjoy. The minions are all on a couch watching said advert and are head over heels, but one dynamite smashing their piggy bank later and they realize they have no money. Suddenly, it's a more generic idea. Again, how does one make money? By going to a retirement home to do some gardening work for them. Alright, sounds slightly predatory, but we'll go with it. There are so many minions and so many gardening tasks. Hilarity can ensue. You got cutting grass, gnomes, leaf blowers, barbecue, corgis, of course. And you know, this time, it's some good slapstick. This really feels hit or miss, but there's some great beats this time around. Though, also, you got the checklist gags. The barbecue grill explodes and exposes minion butt. There's several bits about poo, including a minion screaming the words, Kaka Doody, but it all loops together quite nicely. Every minion fails and they all intermix with each other, only to reveal the grannies had intended them to fail, paying them for the entertainment factor rather than their gardening. They get the blender, fill it with bananas, and then they're head over heels for a new blender with more buttons. Redoing the gardening again and the gnome shatters after being fixed. And that's it. Hmm, this was pretty good, but then the ending kind of fell flat, so it comes in second on the list. Which really says something, considering it was filled with poop jokes, and it's second. <laughs> Secret Life of Pets is another stab of being a Bolt spin-off rip-off spin-off with Super Gidget, which is literally Super Rhino. <laughs> Ah, back to Minions again with Yellow is the New Black. Clearly hopping on that Orange is the New Black vibe. Remember that? Now the Minions are inexplicably in prison. Though, to be honest, I like these prompts the most. The Hilarity Ensues Foundation seems to have the most potential out of the lot. So let's see how a Minion prison story goes. Their job is to print... License plates? 
but they use this mild hydraulic press to press anything, of course. Is this more trend hopping? The hydraulic press trend? Anyway, as punishment, they're put on the train tracks. Only for the real protagonist to show up with this escaping prisoner, who just drags the minions along with him. Cool! Dragging them around like a zip line and just having them by his side. Though the minions aren't exactly all that helpful, even if they tried. But it's an escape for them too, as they're all on the run. Chased by a SWAT team, they're swung through town over train tracks, but as things continue to go wrong for the two, the prisoner says his farewells. They were only ever tools anyway. But the minions are there for each other, diving under an oncoming train before escaping to the... Circus. And cannonball shooting themselves right back to prison grounds. Great! I like the idea that they were side characters to some bigger story taking place, but there's some nice slapstick beats. It's not too crazy on the creative front, but I certainly wouldn't call it neutral. Let's put it in third place. Get it! I'm a winner! As soon as you send me an additional 99.95. What? But I did everything you said! They made another sing short. Do you remember Eddie? I don't really either. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we next have from the Despicable Me franchise, Competition. This is about as generic of an idea as I can think. Literally the plot of any student short animation, but done with minions. And this one came out in 2015, so you can't even say it's their very, very first one. It came with the Minions movie, number three. After a logo about a giant plug where the minions are inexplicably in space, we have these two in some secret bomb lab where they're scrapping plans and throwing the paper into the bin. This then becomes a competition. Wow, wow, we were. Perfect throws even when blind. They then have an impromptu boxing match between the two. I like that the set is built for that urge, followed by a thumb war and slapsies, fire extinguisher chair races, and then bombs. Explosive chemistry as the minions drop down on this giant shaft. Was there a minions dropper game on mobile? Somehow I got like a sent back to a dormant memory watching the sequence. They make a competition of falling faster than the other before the whole place super blasts in explosive materials. The minions are burnt and the bin lands perfectly back in place. Back to throwing paper. Look, it's kind of creative with how it kept escalating, but is this not just a normal short idea with minions slapped into it? I don't know, something about this one feels particularly soulless. Or maybe it's that strange memory of a minion mobile game that's got me thinking in this way. I guess it's not bottom tier, but we'll put it as third last. <laughs> There's a Lorax Serenade short. I don't really understand who's who. Crow Minions is next. We're almost done. I don't get the title. I just see the Croods. Is this a knowing Croods ripoff? Anyway, after the logo has a minion shot with many arrows to the bart, we find our minions in prehistoric time, where they are given the task to babysit a caveman's baby, as the big scary adult goes out to hunt a buffalo. The baby, of course, is a wild child that's far too much to handle. Pulling on mouths, hitting the minions, grabbing a weapon, and then a pterodactyl comes in as well. Grabbing the baby to take to a tower as the baby hits its eggs and blames the minions for it. Leading to more battling and anger as they catch a ride, are flung around and crash into a mountain. Caveman Dad then comes back with prior buffalo just in time to find a perfect delivery of the baby. Perfect ending, if not for the baby, inhaling the entire meat and blaming the minions too. The dad angrily attacks the minions, the baby has that evil look in its eyes, and the pterodactyl takes the baby. The baby is dead. I guess this is a hilarity ensues kind of prompt in caveman times, but it's not that impressive. Pretty tropey from a cartoon perspective, and even if it's intended to be baby's first animated short, so these tropes are new to the audience, should it really be upheld on a pedestal for just rehashing the comedic ingenuity of the past and calling it your own? No. Make something original for these kids' illumination. It's not badly done, but it's not a neutral tier. It's the new third last. At least competition had variety. Another Lorax short. Why they have so many bunched up like this? Skip. Give me your best shot. Yeah. 
We're now in proper Minions movie territory, though the logo is a crossover with the Grinch for some reason. Blinky Nelson. It's about the evil family the Minions come about to in their protagonist movie. After committing a successful robbery, the baby has left his pacifier. But instead of being a big boy now, he decides to use toys in his bedroom to build a helicopter and fly right back to the museum. It's Baby vs. Museum. I don't think I've heard that one before. Going through the vents, there's nightlights for the laser room, baby powder for the passcode, all sorts of good assets to be using here. As the guard is notified and looking about, Blinky finds his pacifier in the hands of a statue, how perfect, but just in time for the guard to spot they've actually been heisted, believing the baby took everything. Not a thinker, this guard. Antics ensue to give the thinker a thought and stop the guard. As Blinky returns to his crib, parents none the wiser over it all. This had something going for it. It's like the opposite of my past complaints. An original founding, assets to play off of, but it didn't actually do that much with it. Kind of watered down on the execution instead. It's better than bad, but more like neutral. We'll put it one below the original puppy one. And finally, we have our last Minion short, at least in the available collection on Netflix at the moment. Apparently all three shorts on the original Despicable Me 1 are locked behind Volume 3. And though they are catchable online, it's in really poor quality. So I'm just gonna wait out for my Minions update and get some Mario movie shorts on the side too. <laughs> Panic in the mailroom. This is a classic setup. Literally the same as I Love Lucy from seven decades ago. Conveyor belt issues. There's two minions. One is lazy, the other is neurotic. The lazy one comes with his own issues in messing up the system, but then the helpful one is hit with purple sludge. Ah yes, we're in the despicable Me Too territory of creating rabid minions. As more boxes come through, the purple minion now goes full on, eating through all the boxes and making the lazy one really not have to worry about work anymore. Perfect. Until... <gasps> Kittens? Suddenly, now we've got a conflict. As the lazy minion now has to run and attempt to save these cats, all the while the purple guy is switching rapidly between his rabid states. They climb a box of mountains, a climax of drama ensues, and he's returned to normal. Charmed by the kittens, the purple fades away. If it wasn't for... The cats themselves being afflicted with the purple ooze. Cut to black, listen to those screams. It's fine. Classic. Standard. It's reserved with a lack of location change and the conflict is pretty simple. But it's an alright back and forth. Neutral again, but on the better side of it. 6 out of 10 vibes. Please, <laughs> piggies! <laughs> and since we're not covering the sing shorts just yet, you don't need to hear about Gunter and how he babysits. That was the 11 minion shorts we have access to so far. There's still another 5 in the archive at the moment and some Mario shorts yet to be released. But of the ones we have seen, the rankings go as follows. Bottom tier we have The Secret Life of Kyle, Santa's Little Helpers, Crow Minions and Competition, or Gunning for Bad by my standards. At the neutral bar we have Blinky Nelson, Puppy, Training Wheels and Panic in the Mailroom. And finally, the top three, actually good mostly, we have Yellow is the New Black, Moa Minions and Minion Scouts. Funky prompts where hilarity ensues. And I thought we were overexposed to Minions before. Can't wait for another- can't wait for another collection to release as each movie gets three mini installments. What are they gonna do to our Mario? Whatever the case, I'll try and vary out this spin-off series, but I'll be back soon enough for more illumination. Can't forget those several sing spin-offs. Oh boy. For now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a little bit. Uh, uh. <laughs>